Okay, so uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about ICT regulations and how it relates to this year's theme of inclusion, empowerment, and growth. Uh, before I proceed, I'd like to thank Ms. Uh, Queen Oren uh, for assisting me in the preparation of this presentation. Next slide, please. So I will first explain how ICT regulatory reform is aligned with APEC programs. Next, I will give an overview of the state of broadband access and discuss specific reforms that have been implemented in recent years. I will then conclude by identifying areas for improvement in ICT regulation. Next slide, please. So you might be wondering uh, what ICT regulations have to do with APEC, given that it is known as a trade and investment forum. Uh, this figure shows the high-level mechanisms for cooperation in APEC that are relevant to the regulation of ICT. So these are the Enhanced APEC Agenda for Structural Reform, the APEC Services Competitiveness Roadmap, and the APEC Internet and Digital uh, Economy Roadmap, or IDER, which has been mentioned by Assistant Secretary Punsalam. It has identified various areas of cooperation, which include digital infrastructure, interoperability, universal broadband access, and digital regulatory coherence and cooperation, among others. Next slide. So um, here we I briefly talk about the connection between the two streams. Uh, the figure on the left shows the openness, that openness is a central driver of services competitiveness, but it interacts with the other drivers, which include infrastructure, innovation, human capital, and regulation. So regulations are important as they serve as uh, because Although they serve a legitimate purpose, uh, they can also affect the competitiveness of services, for example, when they add to the cost faced by service suppliers. Moreover, cross-economy divergences in regulation, as mentioned by uh, Mr. Pasqua, can significantly increase trade costs, particularly for SME. Now, there is an overlap uh, of the services policy agenda in APEC and the four pillars of Thus, um, EAASR representing the essential components of structural reform. So these are creating an enabling environment for open, transparent, and competitive markets, boosting uh, business recovery and resilience. Number three is ensuring that all groups have access to opportunities for inclusive, sustainable growth, and greater well-being. And then the fourth pillar is harnessing innovation new technology and skills to boost productivity and digitalization. So these APEC tools can help us understand and identify the necessary reforms to achieve inclusion, empowerment, and growth. Next slide. Um, okay, so if we want everyone to benefit from digitalization, we must ensure access to internet services. According to ITU estimates in 2022, 72.3% uh, of individuals were using the internet. Out of 100 people have fixed broadband subscription, while 70 out of 100 people have active mobile broadband, broadband subscription. Now, in terms of prices, um, mobile broadband has achieved the affordability target of 2%, uh, and this is an international benchmark. 2% share of monthly gross national income per capita but fixed broadband is still very expensive in the Philippines at 11.26%. So this is way above the international target. In terms of uh, speed, both fixed and mobile broadband has uh, generally increased or improved in the last year. Next slide. So this figure gives a better picture of the digital divide. And this is from the World Bank. Uh, it shows that the national capital region was the only market where more than 30% of households had access to fixed wired broadband. And in other provinces, it was less than 10%. Next slide, please. And in this slide, uh, we show how, or the, this is from the World Bank again, it shows how we fare, the Philippines, how we fare in the region, in ASEAN, the Philippines lags behind its peers, and the ASEAN average 
in terms of access, speed, and cost. Okay, next slide. So in recent years, there have been significant policy and regulatory reforms in the ICT sector in the Philippines. The institutional and governance framework was strengthened with the creation of the DICT and the release of the National Broadband Plan. Other reforms were a mix of competition, liberalization, and facilitation. Um, a new license was awarded in 2019 to break up the duopoly in the mobile market. In 2021, access to satellite services was liberalized. And then in uh, 2022, the Public Service Act was amended, removing foreign equity restrictions uh, in telecommunications and other industries that are considered public services, but not utility. Now, in terms of facilitation measures, there's um, the DICT also released a common tower policy, and there are a number of joint issuances from different uh, government agencies to rationalize the process and requirements for granting permits. Uh, moving forward, the development plan has also identified other reforms, which include uh, institutionalizing the National Broadband Plan. And we learned last week that um, the DIC is now going to, is going to launch the National Broadband Plan 2.0. Uh, we also learned and also another uh, uh, priority for the government as identified in the plan is the passage of the open access in data transmission bill to liberalize the building of networks and access to spectrum, particularly for rural and geographically disadvantaged areas in the country. And this is now, um, there's a new bill called, uh, it's the substitute bill for the open access in data transmission deal, and it's called the Conectatum Pinoy. Okay, to answer the question of Ms. Mela, there are other relevant laws which will help strengthen the ecosystem of the Philipp Philippine digital economy. Uh, note that um, uh, these policies are aligned with the drivers of, the, of competitiveness that I mentioned it's, uh, previously. So in the book uh, that the IDS released last year, we talked about the different policies and regulations in the different um, areas of the economy, such as commerce, smart city, fintech, and others. Okay, so um, we know that the impact of reforms takes time, but the entry of Starlink, for example, can be attributed to a combination of liberalization and facilitation measures, which shows the importance of pursuing a combination of reform. So according to the law firm that assisted the company, the EO that liberalized access to uh, satellite services enabled Starlink to register as a satellite systems provider and operator and get bandwidth, bandwidth from its own satellites. And as a vast provider, it could sell internet services directly to end users without the need of a congressional franchise. Another factor was the speed of regulatory approval. Um, it took them 30 minutes, to the, the end, once they had received the complete set of documents. And then finally, the Public Service Act amendment allowed Starlink to uh, Philippines to be 100% foreign owned. So this is a clear example of how updating ICT regulations contribute to inclusion. Satellite technology can provide internet access in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, so it is especially suitable for the Philippines. Moreover, we can rely on this technology to provide reliable internet in times, even in times of natural disaster. And as mentioned by Dr. Poria, uh, Poria rather, uh, the Philippines is um, ranks first in terms of disaster risk according to the World Risk Index. So this kind of technology is uh, suitable for the Philippines. Uh, next slide, please. So there are still a number of regulatory impediments that we need to address, especially the artificial barriers or those created by government that limit um, market entry and expansion. We also have to manage natural barriers, such as the limited radio spectrum. So we need a national policy to ensure optimal or efficient Additionally, access regulations need to be strengthened. 
so that smaller firms are not discriminated against in terms of race or quality of access. And of course, to enforce these regulations, we need an independent, credible, and competent regulatory authority. And so, and so these are some of the key um, challenges. And the other recommendations will help improve the functions of the regulator if they are able to uh, monitor industry performance and uh, have the data that we need. So as a network of researchers, PASN and the students, you can look at these issues in a systematic way and also tap the resources available in the different APEC forum. So in the final slide, we listed the references which talk about the various ways that ICT regulations uh, can contribute to uh, towards inclusion, empowerment, and growth. Thank you.